I've featured this little bug zapper style device before on this channel and I bought some more because I wanted to do an experiment. I wanted to put different coloured LEDs in them and try them outside and see which ones attracted the most insects. However, I noticed that these new ones have the um, surface mount LEDs instead of the standard um, 5mm type. Now, the last one, when I shorted it out a few times, it suddenly went bang. So let's uh, see if we can make this one go bang. No, it seems, it seems alright. Okay. Now, I've already tested the power consumption, and this one is 1 watt, uh, about 4 milliamps. So let's put the death dapt to the side. The instructions are pretty much the same as the other one. They're just weird. It, um, it says things like, This go out as save energy mosquito utensil is adornment. Hypnotic quiet serial lighting designer so must eschew lighting. Strong lights usage. Usage whether then right direct effect go out mosquito effect. It's very odd language. It's kind of like multiple translations from different languages that have gone wrong. I should short this out before I... Uh yeah, that holds a charge. That's worth mentioning. Holds a charge. So let's pop this in this and see if the circuitry is the same as before. The previous one, the circuitry was just all grossly underrated capacitors. It was like, no wonder it actually went bang. And it was quite a, a modest number of voltage multiplier stages. Strange circuitry indeed in the last one. It took me a while to trace it out. I wonder if it's going to be just the same again. I wonder if it's going to be the same random selection of capacitors of all different colours. Oh, it's a much, much smaller circuit board. I'm going to short both those capacitors out. Just as a precaution. Uh-huh. And this one. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, Radio. So there's the circuit board, the LEDs. Okay. Right, I see what they're doing. Right. So let's, uh, this has got nothing on it. It's got a resistor here. Big resistor, 56K, uh, green, blue, orange, 5, 6, and 3 zeros. It's got two diodes, which uh, is probably, it looks, just looking at this at the moment, it looks as though it could be a single stage multiplier by the fact there's a small capacitor, a large capacitor. I wonder what's uh, feeding the LEDs. Is that resistor doing the LEDs? Let's get the notepad in and doodle this down. So, nice of them to use all the same colour for just about everything. So we've got the power coming in, goes up to, so these two are common, so the LED and the small capacitor. Let's say I get the LEDs out of the way first because their circuitry looks independent. So yeah, this is a one connection at the end here and that's the other. So let's uh, do get the LEDs out of the way first. The LEDs appear to be uh, a resistor and then two inverse parallel groups of LEDs. Very simple. So in each half wave, one group lights, uh, and it just makes it super simple. The only difference the other one had that I don't think this one does have, no it doesn't, uh, was they had it tied across like that. So the voltage, the reverse voltage was always capped to exactly three volts um, across each LED by the other LED in the opposite direction. Rightio. So just out of interest, is that what's drawing most of the current? The resistor is 56K. Quick bit of maths. I equals V over R, so that's 240 volts divided by 56K equals, well, there's the current. It's about 4 milliamps. So that's, uh, basically speaking, that's across live and neutral, or hot and return, as it may be in your other part of the country, part of the world. Now, take a look at the rest of the circuitry. We've got the big capacitor is connected to, let's say I do it from the bottom here, so it's connected to, well this would be, this would, in our 
supply this would be live. Well, it depends which way it's plugged in. It doesn't really matter. So I'll just uh, mark it live. Um, and it's connected with the two diodes across it. So big capacitor and the two diodes across it, which kind of points at a voltage multiplier arrangement. The neutral is going to the middle of those capacitors. So it's got a configuration like this. The diodes are pointing down the way, like that. It doesn't really matter which way around they go. And go. The capacitors are rated. Four hundred and seventy nano. At well, that's an X two. It's two hundred seventy five volt AC. Which, generally speaking, these capacitors are rated for about six hundred volts or so. The smaller one is rated. That's quite small indeed. Text in that one. Two hundred twenty nano. And it's also an X two. So these are both suppression capacitors. That's quite good. So that's 220 nano, he said, botching that bit. And that again is 275 volt AC because it is X2. And the output of the, the output to the grid is just across that capacitor. So this capacitor here, uh, I kind of botched that now, but I'm going to have to draw it like that then is going to the grid. That's very simple. It's just, a, you know, it's two distinct sections of circuitry. You've got the resistor here is feeding the LEDs, the little LED circuit board, and the two capacitors and the two diodes down there are the voltage multiplier. Very, very simple circuitry indeed. Very clear well spaced circuit board. That is infinitely better than another one and it was very poppy, very sparky as well. It's got uh, quite a lot of beef behind it. So yes, that's a, a better design than the other one. It should be more reliable. It's one that I wouldn't actually be too bothered about leaving plugged in. The other one I would have been a bit concerned about leaving plugged in. If you recall, the other one just blew up and it blew all its cables. Uh, the cables actually filled like fuses. The, the actually physical, it was all copper plated inside. But yes, uh, so as far as the LEDs go, if I want to do that project, I suppose I could modify it. I could make uh, a batch of small circuit boards that go in here with the standard LEDs on it. The resistor is going to limit the amount of current. I wonder if they're using the resistor to add warmth or it's just purely as a cheap option just to make it, um, well, simple. I mean, a resistor uh, in series the LEDs is about as simple as you get and this is a fairly cheap unit. But yeah... It's pretty neat. It's pretty neat indeed, actually. And it's quite, uh, it's quite a nice layout as well. The way it goes together. And that little circuit board, uh, kind of, yeah, it's not too bad. It, it can't really slide too far. It can't go too close to the connections over there. And these connections are recessed enough that it's not actually going to short up against them either. So yeah, interesting little design. These, this. These are better than the last one, but still, it's got that thing that, you know, uh, I w it would have been nice if it took the standard 5mm LEDs. But not to worry, I can, I can fix that. So yes, quite a smart and interesting little unit. I thought I'd add a few extra details to this video. The first is that this particular unit came from an eBay seller called My Understroke Holiday Store. And it cost £1.36, quite cheap. I mean, they're all very cheap. It's a really common item. Uh, the one in the picture shows the standard through-hole LEDs, so you don't really 100% know what you're going to get here. Um, it's notable that this particular version uh, has the rather odd number HN666 on the front of it. Hmm. Right, uh, the circuitry inside, let's take a look at the voltage multiplier again. So here is the large capacitor, and here's the small capacitor. And the way the voltage multiplier works, it relies on the fact that the AC power that's coming in, in our case, it's uh, 240 volts AC, supposed to be 230, but is 240. Uh, it's all alternate, alternating in polarity, so uh, live and neutral are going, well, positive 
for the lives going positive and then negative and neutrals going opposite. So when uh, I've turned the diodes around, it really doesn't matter which way the diodes point in this particular application. And uh, when live goes positive and the neutral goes negative, this capacitor will charge to the peak mains voltage, which it will charge up to about, in the UK, it will be about 330-ish volts, a wee bit higher. Uh, and then when the polarity changes and this goes positive and this goes negative, then that is already uh, 330 volts above this, so to speak, so then it pushes it up to uh, about 660 volts. And what you end up with is you get about 660 volts across this capacitor. And it's just a, a very simple sort of push-pull arrangement. It's like a, a climbing ladder of voltage. And the output of this capacitor is just literally just run straight out to the grid. And then it is just interleaving fingers like this. So that when a fly goes across the grid, which is live at 660 volts, we should measure that, shouldn't we? Uh, it then shorts that out and it, it zaps the fly. But it's also worth noting, I'm just going to short this out uh, just before I stick my finger in. It's also worth noting that you can get your finger through this grid and touch it. Um, even an adult, I'm quite big hands, I can get my finger through, no problem to touch that. And also uh, the front cover is kind of unclippable, exposing that to touch. So while it's open... Let's uh, plug it in. So that grid is now live. Oh, let's measure it. Meter. So let's turn this right round. Oh, uh, yeah, it goes up to 1,000 volts. That's going to be needed. And it's worth mentioning that this grid is effectively, one side of it is connected directly to the mains. So um, just note that whichever you plug it into the socket, uh, it could potentially be live at mains voltage. So let's check. That's 1000 volts DC. And the voltage across this grid is 660 volts. Close enough. Pow. Nice. So, um, yes, not super safe if there's kids knocking about uh, because it is, as I say, this grid, said Clive, just gratuitously shorting it out for the hell of it. Uh, this grid that's got a lot of beef to it. That really pops. I can actually feel a kick from the screwdriver when I short that out. But uh, yeah, this grid is effectively live. And also, because there's no discharge resistors across that, it would have been nice in the design if they'd just stuck, well, knowing what the Chinese manufacturers do, they'd have just stuck one resistor across. But I'd stick a couple. High value resistors like one meg ohm. Maybe even a few, but having said that, they're obviously keeping this simple. And without them, it won't discharge. And that means that even when you come back after a while, it's going to hold enough to give you quite a nasty zap. So, uh, quite cool. Quite a cool toy indeed.